Hello, <coughs> hello everybody. Uh, this is the second session of the course Solar Energy Application. Last week, uh, I think we discussed about the so renewable energy resources as the topic of our course is solar energy application. So we will focus on solar energy only uh, in the following sessions. Today we want to discuss about the solar radiation. This is part one, uh, which <coughs> discusses about the Sun-Earth geometry. Uh, the textbook for our course is uh, a very well-known textbook, Solar Engineering of Thermal Processes. Uh, this is the fifth edition, actually in the new edition, which has been published in 2020. Some chapters are added uh, regarding photovoltaics and wind also. Uh, so uh, you can prepare the book. Uh, there are other references which I introduce you during the study. Today we will learn about the Sun-Earth distance, variation of Sun-Earth distance during the year, what is solar constant and its variation, the meaning of extraterrestrial and terrestrial ra solar radiation, component of radiation, uh, I mean diffuse and direct, uh, and how to measure them, how to measure diffuse beam or direct and total solar radiation, what are the share of diffuse and direct solar radiation, and the importance of beam or direct radiation in concentrating collectors, and uh, an introduction uh, to solar radiation on tilted surfaces, a very important uh, definition about the difference between irradiance and irradiation or insulation. And uh, we look together at some solar radiation resources to have some, ex some exercise. Okay, let's uh, start by the Sun-Earth distance. Uh, as you know or uh, see in the picture, the diameter of the Sun is much larger than the Earth and the distance between them is approximately 150 million kilometers. The important point here is that the distance between the Sun and the Earth is not constant during the year. It varies by 1.7% due to the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit. So the orbit of the Earth around the Sun is not a circle. Uh, the average or mean distance between the Earth and the Sun is 149 million kilometer, which is named astronomical unit or AU. So further on, whenever you see AU, the meaning is astronomical unit, which is around uh, 149 million kilometer. Uh, the, the slide here shows the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. You can see that the minimum distance, which is 147 million kilometers, is on January the 3rd, which we name it Haziz. And the maximum distance is 152 million kilometers, uh, which occurs on 4th of July, and the name is Oj. So, unlike uh, many other people may think the minimum distance between the sun and the earth is not on uh, summer but it is in winter and the same for the summer you can see that uh, in summer actually in the middle of the summer we have the maximum distance between the sun and the earth uh, so what is the reason for uh, for seasons, uh, this actually the reason for uh, what we know as seasons is not the distance between the sun and the earth and actually the reason is another parameter which is the declination angle and we will discuss about that later. Here you can see the variation during the days of the year starting from 1st of January. You can see that the minimum distance is on uh, January. Uh, and the maximum distance, as you can see, is somewhere in the summer. 
The next uh, very important parameter that we should learn is solar constant. Solar constant, as you can see here, which we show by G with the subscript SC, is the energy from the sun per unit time. It means that it is joule per second, for example, which is what? Received on a unit area per square meter. And the area is perpendicular to the sun rays because you know that the angle of the surface with respect to the sun rays affect uh, the intensity of solar radiation so we are discussing about a plate which is placed uh, completely normal to the sun rays and uh, at mean sun earth distance 149 kilometer million kilometer and the important point is that outside the atmosphere or on the earth neglecting the effect of atmosphere what's the meaning see this picture which is a very interesting picture uh, actually the earth atmosphere out extends outward for about four, 500 kilometer while the distance between the earth and the sun is 149 sorry this is wrong 149 kilometer or 150 kilometer if we want to round it okay so you can see that the thickness of the atmosphere as you can see here in this picture and here you can see that if the earth were the size of a basketball ball the thickness of the atmosphere could be modeled by a thin sheet of plastic wrapped around the ball so the thickness of the atmosphere is very small both in comparison to the earth diameter and also in comparison to the distance between the earth and the sun so whenever we discuss about the solar radiation so the next the other the other important point is that as you may remember from physics the intensity of solar radiation the intensity of solar radiation varies with the distance from the source of radiation for example if this is sun and the radiation intensity is h sun which is this value over the sun then when there's a distance between the sun and the earth for example or any other planet the intensity of the radiation on that surface is proportional to d square reversed okay so whenever the distance between the source of radiation and the receiving surface varies the intensity of radiation as you can see here also varies so uh, you can say that uh, due to the small thickness of the atmosphere in comparison to d solar constant can be considered as the energy from the sun as we told per unit time received on and others and either just outside the atmosphere or on the earth neglecting the effect of atmosphere this means that you can say that solar constant as we told here is per unit time received on unit area area is perpendicular to the sun rays at mean sun earth distance and where the plate or surface is installed either outside the atmosphere okay or on the earth neglecting the effect of atmosphere actually you know that the atmospheric effect is very large on the solar radiation but for the solar constant you can use either of these definitions what's the value of solar constant it's around 1,367 watt per square meter. Become familiar with two other definitions. You can see here the sun, the atmosphere, and the earth. Actually, the atmosphere is the extends uh, to the earth. This uh, figure may be somewhat corrected, but uh, the, uh, the solar radiation, which is just outside the atmosphere, boundary here is named extraterrestrial radiation and what we receive on the earth is terrestrial radiation so whenever you see terrestrial and extraterrestrial radiation the meaning is as you can see here in this slide you can see the variation of solar constant during different months of the year here is January and you can see that solar constant has its maximum value why because the distance between the sun and the earth is minimum at this date and here uh, and here you can see that somewhere between june and july in the summer 
you have the minimum solar constant. Why? It is so because the distance between the sun and the earth is at its maximum at this time of the year. Okay. As the earth orbit around the sun is not a circle, so you can expect that the value of solar constant, as you can see in this slide, is not constant during the year. Is there any equation describing this curve? Yes, actually at least there are two equations in your book. There are other equations, but these are enough for our course. The first is GON. You can see here that GON is extraterrestrial radiation measured on the plane normal to the radiation on the end day of the year. This is small n actually, which is uh, shown by GSC multiplied by these parentheses. Here n is the day number. So by use of this formula, putting 1367 for GSC and n for the day number, you can calculate GON which is actually the curve shown in the previous slide either you can use this equation instead uh, which is somewhat more complicated but more accurate here b stands for the uh, uh, n minus 1 multiplied by 360 over 365 how you can find n either you can calculate it yourself or use this table there's a table here for example if today is for example 10th of june then you will come to the row which shows june and then put 10 instead of i adding 10 to 151 is 161 which is the day number here you can see other columns for the average day of the month actually we have an average day for each month it is not actually the middle of the month as you can see it is based on the solar radiation averaging and for each month for example for the month of july 17th of july is the average day of the month and what is the day number exactly by the same formula shown here you can calculate the n and this is the declination angle which we'll discuss about that later the next definition is the def definition of diffuse and beam or direct solar radiation. We told before that sun rays passing the empty atmosphere, which is the extraterrestrial region, uh, comes to the atmosphere and then it's either it's a spectral uh, value or it, its intensity will be will be varied by the molecules and uh, maybe other uh, matters that are substances that are in the atmosphere for example like the one you can see here the most important uh, definition here is dividing the total solar radiation coming to the earth into diffuse and beam radiation as you can see this picture may show it better direct solar radiation is the radiation which comes directly from the sun rays without a scattering for example this may be either a solar sensor or a solar collector or solar photovoltaic module or any other um, uh, desired element or surface but the solar radiation which hits to for example clothes or other particles which are ex which are existing in the air like dust like other molecules in the air pollution or something like this and then again comes to your surface your desired surface is then diffuse solar radiation so we have either direct or beam solar radiation and diffuse solar radiation here you can see the definition uh, which shows better the meaning beam radiation is the solar radiation received from the sun without having been scattered by the atmosphere okay and generally in this book or in this course we use beam radiation instead of direct solar radiation to avoid confusion between subscript for direct and diffuse because you can see that both start with d what is diffuse radiation diffuse radiation is the solar radiation received from the sun after its direction has been changed by scattering by the atmosphere or anything which is existing in the atmosphere and the sum of these two radiation beam and diffuse radiation is the total solar radiation okay the sum of beam and diffuse solar radiation on a surface 
And the most common measurement of solar radiation is on a horizontal surface and the total solar radiation on a horizontal surface is named global radiation or global horizontal irradiation to emphasize on the fact that this is on a horizontal surface. So whenever you see global horizontal radiation or total solar radiation, it is the sum of beam and diffuse solar radiation on a, on a horizontal surface. How you can measure the solar radiation? This is a uh, very, uh, very complete topic that we will not cover in detail actually. I just want to show you how the solar radiation um, is measured just in some simple, uh, with some simple slides. Okay, uh, the first is GHI, as I discussed, uh, to, I told you just now in the previous slide. GHI stands for Global Horizontal Irradiation. It is the total solar radiation on a horizontal surface. What's the irradiation? Because you can see that this is a new uh, parameter here. We will discuss about that later. Just I want to emphasize that uh, it, it is the energy you know because we have two types of solar radiation solar radiation intensity which is instantaneous at exactly at this time and solar energy which is the summation of uh, solar intensity or irradiance during for example a day this is the solar energy not the intensity look uh, it's not power it's energy okay ghi is global horizontal irradiation so uh, what is this? The total amount of radiation received from above, above means above the surface, by horizontal surface. This value includes both direct and diffuse horizontal irradiance. For the direct, you can see a new parameter, DNI, and for the diffuse, you can see a new parameter, DHI, which we'll discuss about them later. What is the application for measuring? There are a lot of applications, metrological like sta uh, stations and also in solar power plants. How it can be measured? There are generally two methods. The first is a pyranometer. You can see here a horizontal pyranometer to measure global horizontal irradiation. There is a sensor generally here in the black area. You can see it. it's a thermopile and there's a glass dome on that. The sun rays hits to the glass dome and hits then to the thermopile sensor which is here. And the signal is produced uh, where the signal is proportional to the intensity of solar radiation. There are also other sensors uh, which are named solar reference cell these are actually a simple solar cell as you can see there are differences between the two but in general this is much more accurate for uh, for especially for research works but if you want to know more about the differences between the pyranometer and the reference cell there's a good paper you can see here this the topic is accuracy measurement of pyranometer versus reference cell for pv resource assessment the next uh, measurement is uh, GTI, which is Global Tilted Irradiation. Uh, as you can see, it is the total amount of direct and diffuse radiation, again, like the previous one, but received by a tilted surface. Tilted surface means a surface like the one you can see here, which are tilted, because you know that generally, or in most cases, uh, solar modules or solar collectors are installed at an angle or tilted so if you measure the solar radiation on the tilted surface which is uh, certainly different with the radiation on a horizontal surface this is named GTI I want just to emphasize once again that the angle of the surface affects the solar radiation intensity we will discuss about that later GTI is an approximate value for the energy yield calculation of fixed installed tilted PV panels. What is the meaning of yield? Yield is the what you, give, you, you take from the sun by the PV modules uh, by, by, put, by installing a pyranometer in a tilted uh, array, tilted plane actually, you can estimate how much energy your panels should, be, should produce and then you can compare with the actual results. As you can see, this is the application. How it is measured? Just by tilting the pyranometer or the reference cell. 
Another uh, measurement is the albedo measure measurement. Uh, actually, there are, there's a new application of, of albedo measurement has a lot of applications in agriculture or in meteorological stations or other, but there's a new application for that and it is bifacial solar modules. Bifacials. Bifacials means two face, okay? Uh, these are modules, you know, because generally in common PV modules you will receive sun from above and the panel produces power. But in the bifacial modules, the back side of the module also can receive light and produce energy. Uh, these are named bifacial modules. For these type of modules, it is important to know the ground reflection or what is named albedo. So this is a device which is used for measuring albedo. The accurate, uh, to, for accurate measurement, there are some more complications and sophisticated calculations needed, which are, which are outside the scope of this course. The, ter the next uh, parameter is DNI. DNI is direct normal irradiation. Direct normal irradiation. As you can see, direct normal irradiance is the amount of solar radiation received per unit area by a surface that is always held perpendicular or normal to the rays okay this is very important so if you have a sensor like the one you can see here the sensor is at the end here and there's a hole there's a long hole in this tube if you direct this sensor to the sun like the one you can see here and then it will measure DNI or direct normal irradiance how you can measure it by a device named peer heliometer peer heliometer but installed on a sun tracker what is sun tracker sun tracker is a device that tracks or follows the sun because the position of the sun in the sky is not constant during the day uh, why a sun tracker or solar tracker is needed because the position of the sun is not constant and if you want to direct to always direct this sensor or this tube toward the sun then you should move this sensor okay so a solar tracker is required like the one you can see here this stand is a fixed stand and then the device as you can see can rotate either horizontally uh, around the vertical line like the one you can see here or it can have an angle okay and this is the sensor so by always putting the device or sensor in such a manner that it's, it's directed toward the sun, then, uh, then you can measure direct solar radiation or DNI. Please note that by measuring the direct normal irradiation like the one I told here, then the sum of DNI and uh, diffuse solar radiation is not equal to the total solar radiation. We will discuss about that later. And uh, these are the application, as you can see. You may know or will learn later that uh, solar surfaces may be either non-concentrating or concentrating. In the concentrating part, we have concentrating solar collectors and concentrating photovoltaics, okay? Uh, and that generally concentrating uh, collectors are used to produce solar power and concentrating PV can also be used to produce power. We'll discuss about these later. The first is named CSP, CPV. And why DNI is important for these type of devices, I'll explain within the next uh, slides. The next, uh, just I forgot to say something here, I think, uh, the GTI or global tilted area irradiation, sometimes you may see POA. POA is plane of array. Array means uh, uh, array of modules. And if the sensor is installed in the same angle as the arrays, then we can say it POA or plane of array. Okay. The next uh, solar radiation measurement is DHI or diffuse horizontal irradiation. Diffuse horizontal irradiation is the amount of radiation received per unit area by surface not subject to any shade or shadow that does not arrive on a direct path from the sun. So in some way you will prevent the direct sun rays to hit the sensor. I repeat, in some way you will prevent the direct sun rays to hit the sensor. How it is measured? It is measured by the same pyranometer as I explained before. 
in the previous slides but but with a shadow ball or shadow ring you can either have a shadow ball right like the one you can see here this is a shadow ball or a shadow ring like the ones you can see here generally if a shadow ball is used then you need a solar tracker also because the ball should always put a shadow on the on the pyranometer shadow of the sun okay but if a ring is used like the one you can see here you generally can adjust the ring manually for example per week because the the angle of the sun or the path of the sun will be different during different days of the year it's not required to change the position each day but uh, but it's good to change the position of the ring for example per week we may find the time to discuss about this topic which is also very important later as i told you just now uh, in the previous uh, slide the application is for P fixed pv installation and the calculation of ghi can be done also in this way that diffuse dhi or diff sometimes it is named diff plus dni not just plus dni but dni should be multiplied by cosine of theta what is theta theta is the zenith angle which is the angle between the sun rays and the vertical we'll discuss about that later but just remember that there is such a formula you can see here uh, a, a solar uh, a diffuse uh, solar radiation uh, measurement device as you can see here the, this is a test lab manufactured by me uh, and it is used for testing solar collectors uh, we will also we also measure the different parts of radiation for example here we have a pyranometer here you uh, we have a air temperature measurement this is the wind velocity measurement and this is the uh, is the sensor for for measuring the diffuse solar radiation as you can see there is a shadow on the pyranometer which is produced by this ring you can see and per week each once a week we adjust the ring position and angle because it should put it should put um, a shadow on the sensor uh, from sunrise to sunset each day uh, within a year okay in summary we have discussed about four main there were there were more but these are the main one ghi which is global horizontal irradiation gti which is the same on tilted surface dhi or diff which is diffuse horizontal irradiation and dni which is the direct normal irradiation here you can see the measurement instrument and the application in summary and also here you can see a setup which has all three uh, parameters this one as you can see here what is this just think a moment yes this is a pyranometer for measuring horizontal irradiation what is this one yes this is the pyranometer with a shadow ball as you can see here which is installed on a solar tracker to put a shadow on the sensor and so it measures the global horizontal uh, diffuse horizontal irradiation or diff and what is this yes this is a peer heliometer which measures uh, direct normal irradiation or dni and as you can see it is also measure installed on a solar tracker device because it should always uh, track the sun and uh, direct it toward the sun okay for this is there is no difference because even you rotate the device uh, this sensor always is held in a horizontal position so always it's it measures the horizontal irradiation Another uh, measurement parameter which is important and generally used in meteorological stations is sunshine hours or sun hours. Actually, the sun hours, as you can see here, is uh, the hours when the sun shines with an intensity of more than equal to more than 120 watt per square meter. So if uh, during a day, which may be, for example, 11 hours or 14 hours, uh, for example you have six hours of sunshine with an intensity more than 120 watt per square meter then uh, six is the sunshine hours or sun hours a day we'll uh, use this parameter in our calculation later 
uh, it may be measured by uh, old instrument like the Campbell Stock Sunshine Recorder which is an old instrument or the more modern sunshine sensors like the one you can see here which, has, which are more common in these days. Uh, the graph here shows an interesting, uh, interesting uh, curve uh, which shows the share of direct and diffuse solar radiation. I, I, you may ask yourself, for example, just know uh, what is the share of uh, diffuse and direct solar radiation outside. Actually, the, sh the share of direct and diffuse solar radiation depends on the and the cl climatic condition. If it's a completely sunny day, let's uh, start from here. It's a completely cloudy day, then 100% of the solar radiation is diffuse solar radiation because when it is completely cloudy, there is no sun rays at all. So the direct radiation or beam radiation is zero and 100% is uh, diffuse radiation. But as you go to the more sunny condition or a completely sunny day, then you can see that uh, most of the radiation is direct solar radiation. You may be surprised why uh, it is not 100% like the one you had here, because even in a completely sunny day, there may be some molecules in the air or dust or something like this. You can, you get, you can see no cloud, okay, but, but there are other substances in the air like the molecules, dust or other things that may scatter the sun rays. So even in a cloudy day, for example, if the total, for example, solar uh, irradiance may be 1000 watt per square meter, uh, then, uh, then uh, for example, 100 watt per square meter may be diffuse and 900 may be direct solar radiation. Uh, just uh, one point I want to remember you here. You may remember that solar constant, which was the solar uh, intensity on a surface perpendicular to the sun rays and uh, outside the atmosphere or neglecting the atmospheric effect, uh, is 1367 watt per square meter on average. Please remember this value also this is an just just a rough value you know because sometimes uh, some rough values are needed for us as a, as engineers uh, the solar intensity or solar irradiance at a completely sunny day okay uh, is around 1000 watt per square meter and don't forget that it cannot be more than 1367 because that value was the value neglecting the atmospheric effect so as you have in real cases atmospheric effects on the earth so the value of solar intensity on the earth will be always less than 1300 or so watt per square meter uh, you may remember 1000 as a good estimation, a rough estimation for the solar intensity at the noon time, for example, in a sunny day. It is much more, it may be much more different based on the location or any other things. But, but I have this uh, from me <laughs> that you can use this value as an estimation for a sunny day. Okay. What is the importance of direct uh, radiation in concentrating collectors? Just an introduction, we'll discuss about all these later in more detail, but you have generally two types of solar receiving surfaces or collectors. Uh, you may have non-concentrating type like the one you can see here. He, this is a flat plate solar collector of the non-concentrating type. This means that the sun rays are not concentrated. But you have also concentrating type of collectors. There are different type of so concentrating collectors. At least there are four types. This is a dish sterling type. There is also parabolic through, through collector. There are solar towers and also there are Fresnel collectors, which we'll discuss about them later. But just uh, suppose this as a representative for the concentrating collectors. Uh, in this type, as you can see, solar rays hit the dishes and then will be concentrated here. Uh, that, for example, a sterling motor may be placed here to produce power. Okay, so you have non-concentrating type of collectors, you have concentrating type of collectors, okay? 
And what's the importance of uh, distinguishing between direct and uh, diffuse solar radiation? The important point here is that for the flat plate or non-concentrating type of collectors, uh, it, they may work both with the direct and diffuse rays, as you can see. Certainly, the value of direct rays will be, the share of direct rays will be much more, but it, they also work with the diffuse rays, okay? This means that, for example, in a cloudy day, the output of the system is not zero. It has some output. But for the concentrating type of collectors, like the parabolate or the dish or something like this, you can see that these blue dotted lines, which show the diffuse solar radiation, cannot be concentrated or reflected to the tube which is placed here. You can only reflect and concentrate direct sun rays. For example, you may remember in that in a cloudy day, you cannot reflect the sun rays by a mirror, okay? So, for concentrating type of types of collectors, like the one you can see here, DNI is very important, and so you can uh, you can conclude that these type of collectors or systems can be installed only in locations where there is a good direct solar radiation and they cannot work with diffuse solar radiation. Another important point here is the distingu distinguishing between a tilted panel or collector or a horizontal collector or panel. Okay, uh, Up to now, we uh, just discussed about the horizontal uh, uh, surface. The surface may be a solar thermal collector or a PV module. And when you have a horizontal surface, then the total solar radiation on that is uh, includes just uh, diffuse and direct solar radiation. But when the surface is tilted at an angle to the horizontal, then there will be a third one here. This is the ground reflected. What's the meaning? Ground reflected is part of the solar radiation which after hitting the grounds, reflects again to the surface uh, you have, which depends on the type of surface and the surface color. Yes, for example, there is a difference between the grass, uh, for example, or a surface covered by a snow or um, any other uh, any other uh, desired surface. Okay, so for the tilted surface, just remember that it includes the, the includes the uh, share of these three radiation, diffuse, direct, and ground reflected. But for the horizontal one, it is the uh, it includes the direct and diffuse solar radiation. I I do not use the word summation because you can see later that. It is not so simple that just add, for example, ground reflected to direct radiation to diffuse radiation. There are some complexities. Uh, the next, and I think the last definition is, are two definitions about the irradiance and irradiation. We used these parameters before, and I want to do, define them in a more specified manner. No. This uh, graph shows the variation of solar intensity. Okay, up to now we name it solar intensity, but from now on we will use the more exact scientific word, which is irradiance. The solar intensity starts at zero at the sunrise, and if it's a sunny day, it will increase to a maximum, which occurs on the solar noon. Solar noon is not 12 o'clock. We will discuss about that next week. It's the time, uh, the middle of the day, uh, uh, and as we know, time of Azan, okay, Azan is over, and then will decrease again to the sunset where the solar intensity is zero. At each moment of time, the instantaneous value of the solar intensity is named irradiance. Please repeat, irradiance, okay? In this book, we will show irradiance by G. The unit is watt per square meter or any other appropriate unit where the nominator shows the power and the denominator shows the area. So the rate at which radiant energy is incident on a surface per unit area of the surface, the symbol G is used for solar irradiance with appropriate subscripts for beam diffuse or spectral radiation. What's the meaning? When you put a subscript here, for example, D, then the meaning is diffuse irradiance, okay? But 
if you integrate the area below the curve of irradiance you will give another parameter which is named irradiation or insulation which is shown by h let's review the definition the incident energy per unit area on a surface please note this is energy okay this is energy but this one was rate found by integration of irradiance over a specified time usually an hour or a day if you integrate during a day then the name is insulation uh, insulation is a term applying to solar energy radiation if you integrate over a day then the symbol h is used for insulation for a day okay so whenever you see h it is the integration of the area below the curve from sunrise to sunset but if you see symbol i the meaning is that it's not from sunrise to sunset it may be during any specified times for example from nine o'clock to ten o'clock the symbols h and i also can represent beam diffuse or total by the appropriate subscripts and can be on surfaces of any orientation it means that it may be horizontal it may be at an angle tilted or it may be to any direction the unit for h as you can see is joule per square meter or watt hour per square meter both units are used generally so become familiar with both of them in summary uh, we have uh, three parameters g h and i as i told you g is irradiance h is irradiation during a day sunrise to sunset i is irradiation between two sub sorry it is not to it is two two specified hours okay and uh, subscript as you can see here has different meaning for example if you have t capital t this refers to the radiation on a tilted surface if there is no subscript then it is on a horizontal surface it, it if it is n it refers to the radiation on a plane normal to the sun rays okay global horizontal irradiation values are generally you can find in different websites in the internet like the one you can see here for example this is the distribution of global horizontal irradiation you remember that ghi is the irradiation and you know the difference between irradiation and irradiance yes irradiation is the energy which is integrated over a day for example and irradiance is rate this graph is the irradiation and actually tell it frankly we generally work more with the irradiation instead of irradiance because irradiance is a instant is an instantaneous value and uh, there's no much um, use in our work we generally work with the irradiation because it is more useful for us for our calculations uh, okay you can see here that uh, here the legend for example the colors uh, show the value of irradiation ghi uh, the top value is daily totals and the bottom ones are the yearly totals actually the yearly totals are the daily multiplied by 365 and the value as you can see is kilowatt hour per square meter the daily totals are an important one because uh, they're uh, we have another parameter named PSH or peak sun hours a day uh, which we use for designing photovoltaic systems and you will return to that so please uh, note to the values and uh, we will discuss about them later okay come to the graph for example here in, in different parts of the world you can see the value of solar irradiation it may be interesting for you that um, for example in iraq uh, in comparison to other uh, points or other locations in the world there is a there's a good solar radiation it is not the maximum because the maximum you can see for example in saudi arabia or north africa or here in the like, america or uh, some parts in the south of africa and here at the north of australia but but again it's a good value in comparison for example to turkey or in to the to the europe or many other places in the world 
Also, it is possible to have a specific solar radiation, global horizontal irradiation maps for any specific country or region. For example, this is uh, such a map from solargis.com, which we will see together just now. Uh, as you can see, for example, in Iraq, uh, you have the maximum global horizontal radiation in this area, in the southwestern area of Iraq, and the minimum value in the northern part and the northeast part of Iraq. And each color here shows a value where you can, ca you can say what's the value referring to the legend. Okay, uh, let's uh, now have uh, some uh, have a look at some solar resource websites. There are a lot more. I want just to show two of them: SolarGIS.com and Global Solar Atlas. Let's have a look at these two websites. Okay, the first is uh, SolarGIS.com. Here you can see there are a lot of information in this website. You can go through the details and also there are webinars as you can see uh, the next one is prospect for efficient screening and benchmarking project on 13th of june but uh, for no i just want to show you one important resource here click on resource the, there's a tab on above and when you are clicking on resources then you can click on free maps and gis data for example there are much more in this website but i just want to show you one of the capabilities this is the solar resource map select the region for example here you can select middle east wait for the page to be uploaded and then you can select your country for example you may select for example Iraq again just for the page to be uploaded again and you can see here different maps for example the first one is the photovoltaic electricity potential this we will discuss later but uh, just um, to have a short introduction to what is this graph it is kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak kilowatt hour mean the energy produced kilowatt peak is the peak panel or nominal power power of the uh, photovoltaic panel installed this means that for example in this area in this uh, specific area referring to this color per day for example 5 kilowatt hours of energy is produced per kilowatt panel installed in this area we'll discuss about that later this is global horizontal irradiation which we discussed just now you can download the map as you can see here either in a medium size or a poster map I advise you to download the map and print it in a full size and stick it in your room and then everyone who sees the map can uh, distinguish that you are a fan of solar energy. This is a good idea to make your brand on solar energy starting from here putting a big map of your country solar energy potential in your room either in your home or office okay this is the map for the uh, direct normal irradiation you remember that uh, the, this was also one of the parameters in solar energy direct normal irradiation again you can see the variation of uh, dni over the country the other uh, website here you can see is the global solar atlas info it's a very very informative website with a lot of uh, possibilities i want just to show you one of them here at the beginning you can see a map you can see what is showing uh, in the map for example if i want to show global horizontal irradiation i choose that you can see the world map as you can see here or you may zoom in or zoom out for a specific area for example if you uh, put your mouse on an area and click on that then here you can see that for, uh, for example it's in Midyat in Turkey or for example here it is in northern border region here for example it is in Libya or here for example it is in somewhere in Iran or here or here or you may type the name of the location for example if you uh, for example, type Mosul, for example, in Iraq, then click on that. 
it goes to the location you can again zoom in and zoom out you can also uh, select different uh, do do work with these uh, different items in the website i leave it to you to do that okay then you can see for example in Mosul in iraq you can see here different uh, parameters i think if you are using a mobile phone then it the table may be shown uh, below the uh, the map i don't know you can check it yourself but you can find it somewhere finally okay here you can see the global horizontal irradiation you can see that for example for Mosul, global horizontal irradiation is 1871 kilowatt hour per square meter per year you can change this to per day for example then it will be 5.1 or here you can change also the units as you can see it may be kilowatt hour or megajoule per square meter uh, here you can see the diffuse uh, horizontal irradiation or diff which is 1.9 per day let me change it to per year okay and then uh, here you can see that when you click on some of them the color will be also different actually it goes to for example this is DNI when I uh, please note this is DNI and when I click when I click on global horizontal irradiation it will show the GHI global horizontal irradiation DNI as you remember is the direct normal irradiation which was the radiation on surface that is directed normal to the uh, is, is placed normal to the sun rays and it is 1800 as I told you before please note that the sum of DIF or GHI and DNI is not equal to GHI it needs a correction for the zenith angle of the sun okay uh, you can see other parameters we'll discuss about later for example solar photovoltaic power output as I told you this is the energy produced per kilowatt panel installed this is the global tilted irradiation at optimum tilt angle because we told I told you that GTI or tilted irradiation is different from the GHI okay you can see that when you have uh, for example horizontal surface in Mosul okay the yearly solar irradiation uh, or insulation is 1800 while if it is placed on an optimum tilt angle then the value will be much more you can see it is 2000 2001 what is the optimum tilt angle for example based on the calculation from this website the optimum angle for Mosul is 32 degrees what's the meaning it means that for example you should place the panel at an angle of 32 with respect to the horizontal what is 180 it is the optimum direction for this website zero is taken as the south so sorry at the north so 180 means that the panel should be directed toward the south uh, what's the average air temperature this and the elevation is 260 meter there are lots more in this website for example you can also choose a system to calculate but i leave them either for you to you to do it later or we may come back to this website again uh, later and this is an exercise for you uh, go to the same link and find ghi diff and dni uh, for for example another city like Baghdad or you, any other city which you may like to have the values uh, so now I leave uh, to you to go to the website and find what is the value of the solar radiation for example for Baghdad thank you